Hashtag rip LTT was a success. If you missed our three hour long live stream, basically our goal, it was a friendly media battle with Linus Media Group and their team. They passed one of our top 10 rankings recently for the 3D Mark Hall of Fame. And we can't really compete in the same league as people like Kane Penn or Dare Bauer when he's actually trying, uh, but we can compete in the same league as Linus. So that was what the live stream was. This is a quicker recap for you. Uh, this is the test bench, it's a little crazy. We have two 360 rads right here. I'm gonna go through all the parts and we'll go through all the settings that we used and then uh, and talk a bit about some of the overclocking challenges and endeavors we went through for this stream. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Take and the View 71 enclosure. The View 71 is a full tower case that's capable of fitting three video cards in most configurations. It's also one of the better cooling cases in our recent case testing bench lineup. The View 71 has hinged tempered glass doors on either side that make it easy to open and show off. And it comes with at least one rain fan, though you can get the RGB version if you prefer. Learn more at the link in the description below. So let's start with the bench components. First of all, this is our Titan V. It's been put under a water block from EK. We shorted the shunts on it. Some people complain that shorting shunts is bad for them. I don't care. Uh, one, it's not your card. Two, we're competitively overclocking. I buy it for purposes of using it to make money because that's what a media production channel does. So really that opinion is irrelevant. But the point is we shorted the shunts on the Titan V, which did give us an extra couple percentage points in terms of performance because it helps smooth out the frequency a bit. We've got that under an EK water block for the Titan V, which is going to uh, an EK 360 radiator. And then for cooling options, this is a, a completely closed loop. I mean, it's an open loop technically, but it's only going to the GPU. So we have pump and, uh, and reservoir for that, plus the 360 radiator to which we have mounted a Sunon maglev fan. This, this is the supplier for Corsair's maglev fans. We have a Corsair ML fan up here. We have an EK Vardar here. So it's a bit of a mix of things. And then for the other radiator, uh, we have two ML pros and one of the ML non pros. It's a thermal take flow radiator or liquid cooler. So the choices for both of these were to isolate the loops, first of all, and then also use fast pumps to get the liquid into the radiator as quickly as we could and cool it down. So the CPU and the GPU are entirely enclosed loops. Uh, for other cooling elements, we had Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut on the GPU for Thermal Paste. Uh, we had Fuji Poly pads that we just recently bought a bunch of, plus we had a viewer send some in for separate testing we'll be doing later. Uh, Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut on the Thermal Take liquid cooler. And then under the IHS, we have Thermal Grizzly Conductor Knot. So we've got liquid metal going to the IHS and then a high, uh, high thermal conductivity paste going to the cold plate. For the motherboard, we've got an EVGA X299 dark board that actually has proven to be extremely good. We really like the dark motherboard so far. You can see Buildzoid's PCB overview on our channel for more on that. But it's, uh, it's got two small fans on the VRM. They were completely within check the whole time. There's also a Noctua fan up here. This is an NFA14, I think. That was placed there because we weren't fully confident that the every component on the card was getting proper cooling from the block. We had about 90% confidence, but just to make sure we didn't get a thermal shutdown from anything overheating or any runaway issues with VRMs that were uncovered, stuff like that, because it was all thrown together quickly, we just put a Noctua fan up there to blast air down the back and the front of the card just to make sure it's cooled. So that's most of the components. Uh, Intel i9-7980XE, which became a meme on the stream. That's the CPU we used. We had it overclocked a bit. I'll go through those settings later. And for the power supply, also important, we had a Corsair AX1600i, which is one of the best power supplies you can get right now. However, uh, the stream before we even started, uh, started out by tripping the circuit breaker that the system was on because we had this plugged in with the streaming PC plugged in and this machine was drawing about a thousand watts on its own. So that's how we were a bit late, but that's the system. Uh, memory, G-Skill Trident Z is what we ended up using. It's 3,600 megahertz kit. We overclocked it to 4,000 megahertz and I think it's CL, I don't know if it's 16 or 18, but we brought down the timings a bit as well uh, across the board. So that's pretty much what we used. Now that we've gone over the hardware, so you know what we used to get the scores, Next thing is to look at the scores themselves and how we got them from a software side. So we ended up, uh, there are two different ranking systems we were placing on. One is the 3D Mark Hall of Fame, 
That's the one that 3D Mark and Feature Mark regulate and have ownership of. The other one's Hardware Bot or HW Bot. And uh, we submitted scores to each. So we ended up with fourth place for Time Spy Extreme Single GPU on the 3D Mark Hall of Fame, uh, which is right above Gunslinger, who holds a score of 82.63, and right below JPM, actually not right, quite a bit below JPM Boy, who holds a score of 84.89. We were at 82.85. So the distance there is primarily established at this point by things like LN2, uh, chillers, better cooling systems, things like that. The cane pin, of course, way far and away at the top with 9,000 points. So for our score, we ended up pushing a bit further after the stream ended, and uh, the primary contributors to increasing the score were allowing the room to cool down. The room got pretty warm, running the benchmarks for two and a half hours, plus the streaming equipment. So ambient room temperature drops by about four degrees Celsius after we stopped the stream. That was enough to give the Titan V a bit more thermal headroom for boosting a bit higher. And then the other significant change was uh, I pushed the CPU so that the first two cores were 49 X multiplier instead of 48, the rest were 48. And then we uh, pushed the GPU overclock a bit higher as well, 115 megahertz for the HBM, 115 for the core, uh, which seems to be about where stability stopped. So that extra 15 megahertz or so for HBM2 actually helped a lot. And our score was comprised of a graphics score of 78.73 and a CPU score of 11,779. For the next rank up, that would be JPM Boy at 84.89 points, which, although it doesn't look like a lot, is actually a pretty significant lead. And uh, JPM Boy's score is comprised of an 8,203 graphics score and a 10,586 CPU score. So he's actually about 1, 1,200 points behind in CPU and about 400 points ahead in GPU. And despite us still having a greater lead in terms of CPU score, the difference here is that for Time Spy Extreme, which is primarily GPU bound, GPU score matters the most. And th this ranking system illustrates that because he ends up with 200 more total points at 8489, while having an extra 400 GPU and a deficit of 1200 for CPU. So that's most of the scoring difference. Uh, above JPM Boy is Slinky and then Kingpin, and both of those are significantly higher. That gets into LN2 overclocking class, whereas we were running with just air uh, and liquid. And then below us is Gunslinger. For point of reference, Linus Tech Tips and team, their 8092 score was comprised of a 7731 graphics score, pretty close to ours, and a CPU score somewhat distant at 11,009. And that's partly because they didn't really optimize uh, much of their platform on the memory side or the CPU side, but they had a pretty good GPU in terms of binning. So what that shows is that GPU score matters a lot more for Time Spy Extreme because Time Spy Extreme is primarily GPU bound. So an extra couple hundred points in GPU, one is way harder to achieve than an extra couple hundred points in CPU up until a certain degree, and also has way more weight to it. Uh, so yeah, that other 200 points for GPU is not really going to be feasible for us on the card we have without some kind of more exotic cooling to push it there. So hopefully that gives kind of an idea for what we ended up doing. In terms of memory tweaking, there's still room to go. Uh, we were stable at one point at CL15. We ran CL16 for the entire stream. So we might have another couple points we could edge out there. But I ended up just going for CL16 because I didn't want to fight with the memory for half the stream. It's just not fun for anyone. But uh, overall, 4.9 gigahertz on two cores, 4.8 on the rest. For the other settings, off the top of my head, I think we're 1.35, 1.36 V-core for the CPU, and we were 1.95 uh, for the other CPU voltage setting with the extreme voltage option enabled. We also had VSA of 1.225, IO of 1.2, uh, v mesh offset 500 uh, millivolts and mesh was at 32x as well, which seems pretty standard for these. AVX offsets disabled. Memory, we had a couple tuned settings on it. So here's what we had for memory this is a 3600 megahertz G skill kit, as noted earlier. We set up to 4000 megahertz. We set the dim voltage to 1.85, it was semi stable at 1.8. As noted, CL16 with 26 for TRAS. Other changes include uh, RRD 
S at 4, RDL at 6. We had TFA at 16. I think it defaults to something like 44. And then uh, command rate 1, of course. For the rest, TWR is a setting that we might be able to drive, drive down to 16, but it would require a tighter max mem setting. You can set max mem in Windows through MS config uh, and tell it how much memory to limit itself to. But uh, we would need to restrict that more, which would cut into our time spy extreme memory requirements. So left it auto for now. Set 300 for TRFC, uh, maxed out TREFI at 32727, and uh, 6 for TCKE. And then everything that was set to 15 auto, we changed to 6. So that'd be uh, RWDR, RWDD and RWSR. So those are the main memory settings we changed. I guess we can, I'll just show you the BIOS settings for the CPU as well. So for this one, all the voltages, obviously you know, this do this at your own risk. You can damage things and stuff like that. But we did a 1.95 for VIN, 1.36 vCore, which was pushing us to about 95 degrees Celsius in worst cases. And that's where we start running to limits. Unlike GPUs, their CPUs are less sensitive. They just have a hard stop. 1.35 for vMesh. And for the uh, uncore offset, as I was talking about earlier, 500 millivolts uncore offset with IO 1.2, SA 1.225, as noted earlier. So those are all of our settings, if you were curious about them. And uh, 49 on the cores. Can't remember if we ran that for the final score. I think we did, though. It's semi-stable. Um, some benchmarks cause that to crash, others don't. But that's that's pretty much all the bio settings if you were curious. And finally for scoring and for where everyone lands, uh, for Time Spike Stream, 82.85 was our final score that put us at fourth place. For reference, Linus was our benchmark to beat. He was at 80.91, and during the live stream we had a point where we hit 80, no, he's at 80.92. During the live stream we had a point where we hit 80.91. So we were one point away, which is within margin of error. Uh, we ended up doing some tuning to it, got 80.99 for the first score that beat Linus's team's score. And then after that, our next push was to 82.15, I think, and then 82.22, and then later 82.85, which shows you just how much an extra couple megahertz here and there can get you for Firestrike semi-competitive benchmarking because it's a matter of 15 extra megahertz. If you quit before then, that's another one or two places in the leaderboard we'd, we would have fallen down. So Linus ends up at seventh, and hopefully he'll he'll retaliate and do something to challenge us. We're in fourth right now for Time Spy Extreme, 82.85 versus his 80.92. Uh, we've got Zerv and Gunslinger between us, JPM Boy above GN uh, with the more unreachable levels, Kingpin and Slinky above that. For Time Spy Normal, non-extreme, so first disclaimer, all these next few benchmarks didn't really try very hard, and they have different requirements. Some of them are more CPU bound. We didn't tune any further. We just ran the same settings we did for Time Spy Extreme, which you shouldn't do. But for Time Spy Normal, we ended up at 15.494, which is eighth place. And then for uh, Fire Strike Ultra, eighth place at 9,655, not too far away from seventh if we wanted to push. For uh, Fire Strike Extreme, we ended up in fourth place behind Johnny Flash and Slinky PC. We could probably try and push for third, but. Fourth is where we are right now. And then for Firestrike, the normal one, uh, 32,793 points. This is becoming more of a CPU bound test to some extent. And that has us in ninth. So that's that's the whole scoring hierarchy of where we ended up at the end of that stream. Lots of fun. Hardware bot, we're in third for Time Spy Extreme. Uh, fewer people submit there, but I want to make one point here before we close out. And that's for anyone at Hardware Bot, if you're listening, or anyone else who runs a competitive overclocking site, in speaking with some of the people uh, I've worked with on the overclocking side, I think we can all agree to some extent there need to be price divisions of some kind. Uh, kind of like if anything else where there's competition, like, I don't know, a track day with cars or something. If you're getting semi serious with competition, there should be some kind of cutoff in terms of how much money you can put into your test vehicle, in this case, our test bench, and compete within the same class of people. So a world record ranking where it's just anything goes is cool. That's basically what we have now. At the same time, though, a lot of the overclockers who really deserve to be competing 
who are more serious overclockers than we are don't necessarily have five thousand dollars worth of two parts gp is three grand cp is two thousand or something like that and the motherboard's 500 the memory is very expensive these days so what i'm getting at is this is a lot of fun but also people like linus and even to some extent to the same extent really us we don't have a whole lot of business being in the top 10. the only reason people like linus and myself can get there is because we have the hardware from reviews that we do and because as a business that does reviews not overclocking we can buy those parts so it's a little unfair to be sitting on top of between two parts five thousand dollars of components uh, for all the people who are much better overclockers in a skill sense but don't have the same parts arsenal that we do so i, I would love to see hardware bot or someone else make price divisions where they're like the limit for this category is two thousand dollars and your prices need to align with whatever's on new egg amazon whatever otherwise you can't enter because you'll be over the the price value for your rig and you'll be in the next price category that's limited at four thousand dollars something like that because uh, otherwise what will happen is as nvidia and intel continue to push these ultra high-end parts the charts will just be filled with media who don't deserve to be there but have access to everything so that's all i want to say on that lots of fun though for the live stream thank you for joining to watch it if you were there uh, we will do more of these in the future not sure when yet make sure to follow us on twitter so you can catch the next one and of course, for all of you who bought the mod mat during the live stream, thank you. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to buy one of the new mod mats. We will be shipping them in about a week to 10 days now. Uh, they are already in the U.S., just waiting for them to get to us. Then they'll go out the door to everyone who bought them. So pick one of those up. And that's all for this one. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Patreon.com slash gamersnexus helps out directly. I'll see you all next time.